So thank you for joining our seminar today. Uh, our brand is uh, Canine Caviar. We're the first and only alkaline-based pet food in the world. Uh, everybody understand the difference between uh, acid and bases or acid and alkalinity? Uh, Tums and Rolaids are the number one thing for, that are used by humans and Pepsid is the number one thing prescribed by veterinarians. So we all know when our stomach is too acidic and not feeling well, we take these things, right? Um, and we know that's not something that's healthy, otherwise we would be taking them daily uh, as a supplement instead of something when we're having an issue. So we know that acidity is not good for us and our, the opposite side of acidity is alkalinity, which we know is, is uh, healthier for us. So uh, as some of you know or don't know, <coughs> I was a research scientist uh, 25 years ago. I used to do different research in uh, Germany. Uh, we did stem cell research, we did uh, cancer research, we did uh, parentalia, injectables, you name it, we did everything. Um, the company I worked for, we did a, a, a flea medication called Program uh, for Bayer, and uh, I was on part of that, I was the uh, project manager for that. And uh, when we developed that, uh, we realized that my own Great Dane was having these issues, and so this is how we developed the food. Uh, the company I worked for in Germany sold to an Italian firm. The Italians wouldn't give me a visa, and the Germans gave me 30 days to leave the country. And that's when I moved back to the United States. And uh, since most of the research that we were doing was not allowed in America at that time, uh, we started the pet food company. So today we're not really talking about dog food, we're talking about a lifestyle, right? We are a true lifestyle brand, right? So we don't, we're not here to sell a product or to, uh, to, to educate about products per se or about but a lifestyle that we want to live, right? Alkalinity provides your pet with the proper pH balance to oxygenate the body, which reduces anaerobic activity and cellular degeneration, right? So it's an anti-aging effect. Obviously we all want our lives, pets to live forever, so alkalinity is the best way to make that happen. Now some people do think that canine caviar is a medical food because we do make miracles happen in some people's minds. But we are not a medical food, right? We are a lifestyle brand. We are an alkaline food or an alkalizing food. But if you do have a pet that has an issue, right, they can come on our food or our special needs formula, right? And if you have tear stains or hot spots or colitis or all these things, right, after they've been on the food for about 10 weeks, all of those symptoms will go away and then you can go back to the regular food. If for some reason you are on our special needs indefinitely, then we would recommend you rotate through with the canned foods. So a little bit about the reasons why you would feed or recommend canine caviar before we get into the, the, uh, the meat or the heart of the, uh, the, the philosophy or the lifestyle. Uh, we're the first and only alkaline dog food in the world with a pH of 7.1 to 7.4. Why is this important? Because a wolf or a wild dog would naturally eat an alkaline diet, which we'll get into for later, bit, a little bit later on. Uh, and, and a lot of companies say that they are a prey animal diet, right? But typically, or not typically, anything that your dog kills and eats is a prey animal. So basically every dog food is a prey animal diet, right? But the only natural diet is if your dog kills it and eats it, right? Everything else is processed. Uh, we will be synthetic free uh, in 2019. Uh, actually, we will be the only limited ingredient synthetic free pet food in the world. Uh, we do one protein, one complex carbohydrate. For us, it's not so important about if it's grain or grain free, more about simple carbohydrates versus complex carbohydrates. Uh, we are a no transition to diet uh, to canine caviar. Why is this important? Because this is more natural, right? A wolf in the wild wouldn't save half of a rabbit to eat with a chicken the next day. One day he'd eat rabbit, the next day he'd eat chicken. So if you want to feed your pet naturally, you should be feeding something like canine caviar. Uh, we do recommend protein rotation for amino acid diversity. Every time we ingest a protein, our body has to develop different antibodies. That helps us strengthen our immune system. And the wolf in the wild wouldn't eat just rabbit or chicken his whole life, right? One day he'd eat rabbit, the next day he would eat chicken. So everything we're doing is really about nature and the way they would naturally eat it. Uh, our special needs is a veterinary alternative diet. There are two places in the United States that you send out for uh, blood panels. One's in Texas and one is in New York. And when those panels come back, special needs is always the top, one of the top five recommended foods for any symptom that the dog may have. Um, we have the highest metabolized calories of any pet food on the market. Some people will say, oh, I don't want to give my dog so many calories uh, because he'll get fat or I, you know, if I feed him so little, uh, he'll be hungry. But we always want our pets to live forever, right? And no matter what we ingest, we have to convert that to energy. So if our body has to work twice or hard or three times as hard to convert the same amount of energy, obviously those organs are going to wear out much more quickly. If you do have a dog with an insatiable appetite, right, you would give them canine caviar. 
and then give them some fresh fruits or vegetables and they're actually getting the useful vitamins and minerals that they would be needing from those instead of in some pet food where their vitamins and minerals are all dead. We are flash cooked at six seconds at 180 degrees, so we're not destroying that uh, the bioavailability of the pet. And we have the highest digestibility of any pet food on the market. This is very easy science uh, done scientifically. You feed a dog 100 pounds of food, some lucky person gets to go on and clean up the mess. Uh, and after 100 pounds, they weigh how much, they figure out how much that mess weighs, and that's how you determine your digestibility. And today, unfortunately, there's no way to recycle dog poop, so it's still not environmentally friendly. So the smaller, the less waste we have, the more environmentally friendly we are as well. So our food is based on 130 years of research. The first two guys here actually won Nobel Prizes for their research in acid-base relationships. Since their initial studies, there's been done more than one million studies done worldwide on every continent on the planet proving that we need to be alkaline. There's never been one study that says it's healthy to be acidic. And if that's the case, we all would be drinking 10 cups of coffee a day. And if we do that, we all know that we're not feeling very good. Um, the one that's most important to us as pet lovers is this Dr. Van Slyke. He was a Dutch American who did a 40 dog study at Cornell University in the late 1800s, uh, going into the early 1900s. And the results of his study are as follows. So he took 20 dogs and put them on an acidic based diet, which is like every pet food out there, and 20 dogs and put them on an alkalizing based diet. The 20 dogs that were on the acidic based diet ended up with kidney problems, pancreatic problems, liver problems. The reason why this was is because the, the blood was having to steal uh, uh, alkalinity from the organs, right? So the, the blood always has to maintain a pH of 7.28 to 7.38 roughly. And if it doesn't, then we no longer cease to be on this planet. And so what happens is that blood will steal alkalinity from organs first. Well, the main function of the organs is not to provide alkalinity to the blood. But it will because obviously we want to, we are survivors. Mammals are survivors, right? Unlike fish, if you've ever had fish in, their, in your life, you know that if you put the fish in the tank and it doesn't have the proper pH, it's dead the next day because it doesn't have backup systems like mammals do. Uh, they had increased anaerobic activity, which means that they were aging much more quickly. Uh, they had reduced amounts of oxygen on a cellular level and also on a blood level sometimes. Uh, degenerative diseases are all uh, uh, happening when our body is too acidic. Um, causes calcium oxalates, right? We know that if we are too acidic, the dogs will come in with calcium oxalates or kidney stones. And that's because when, we have, when we're too acidic, the body will leach calcium from the bones and the kidneys cannot filter it out fast enough. And so that's when the calcium oxalates form. Without enough oxygen, the, proper, the DNA cell recovery mechanism will not function. Every cell in our body is regenerated every 25 to 40 days. So as long as we're giving our body the proper environment, right, the cells will regenerate properly every time. So the 20 dogs that were on the alkaline diet, like canine caviar, had more oxygen in the blood or more oxygen on a cellular level. They had minimized cellular degeneration. Um, they didn't have issues with kidney problems, liver problems, heart disease, or any of these types of things. None of them had digestive upsets. They didn't have hot spots. They didn't have tear stains. Um, the most amazing thing to him was that that actually reduced anaerobic activity and increases the aerobic activity. And this was basically what showed that it was a, a being a more alkaline is more anti-aging. Um, and most scientists at this point would have said, hey, I'm done with study, I'm, uh, I'm done, right? But Dr. Van Slyke was a real dog lover and he really wanted to see if he could fix the t dogs that he made sick. So he put the 20 dogs that were on the, uh, the, on the acidic based diet and put them on an alkalizing diet and all 20 of the dogs recovered to back to live a normal healthy life. So what is the proper pH balance of a dog? And this we're talking on a cellular tissue level, like all mammals, 7.1 to 7.4. The pH level is the most significant, important body, body our balanced body in our body, right? With, uh, you know, we can't live without the proper pH in our blood. Now we can live on a heart machine, we can live on kidney dialysis, all these things, but without proper blood pH, we, we will no longer live. So alkalinity really is a category of its own when we're talking about pet food, right? So, you know, the alkalinity, you know, like I talked about earlier, right? The only real natural dog or diet is if the wolf kills it and eats it. It doesn't matter if it's kibble, frozen, freeze-dried, whatever it is, it's all been processed. And all of these processes actually change the cellular structure of the original meat, right? But the alkaline is really the only one that actually reduces that anaerobic activity and the aging. It's really what a wolf would eat, right? which we will talk about soon. And it's the only one that's minimizing that cellular degeneration and helping to extend your pet's uh, life. 
So as we talked about, right, a wolf or a wild dog would naturally eat an alkaline diet because the blood, organs, intestines, spinal fluid, and tissue of the animal they're killing and eating is all naturally alkaline. I always say for the easiest example, right, when you see my blood in my veins here, it's blue, that means it's alkaline. If I cut my skin and the start of the blood to come out, right, the red means it's acidic. Not initially, but it, as it oxidizes, it becomes acidic. So obviously, people ask, well, when the wolf kills it and eats it, right, it's becoming, it's, it's obviously becoming acidic. The wolf pack will kill a cow, a pig, or deer, or whatever it is, and they'll have the animal completely consumed within 10 minutes, right, and then they're off to the next one. Because obviously if the wolves were there just hanging out for a couple hours, somebody would be coming to eat the wolf. So the difficulty, and obviously when we make it, our pet food as an alkaline or an alkalizing diet, is obviously we can't put a live chicken or a live rabbit into a bag of dog food, so how do we do it? Well, when the, the wolf or a wild dog would only eat herbivores, they wouldn't eat carnivores, right? The wolf would never eat a, a mountain lion or something like this, right? So in the stomach of those of the herbivores are these very strong herbs that we use in our, in our formulations in our food when we make the process. Now we could use minerals to create an alkalizing effect, which works great, great for humans, right? And that's what I do personally, along with some herbs. But when we give the minerals to our dog, they would have too high of an alkalinity because they don't go to the bathroom often enough and they don't drink enough water, so they would end up with a urinary tract infection. Here on this slide, we will see all of the ingredients that uh, people use in different pet foods, right? Um, and then we will see here, right, meat is only acidic. There is no processed meat that is alkaline. So how do we create an alkaline diet from 7 point range, uh, range of 7.1 to 7.4? What we do is we take the meat here and we mix it with those ingredients over there and then our cooking process that we do uh, creates an alkalizing diet. So limited ingredient is kind of a trend these days um, and actually in, in our personal opinion the best trend that's happened in the last 23 years since we've been doing this uh, because it's the most replicated to what the wolf or the wild dog would eat. What is confusing though is not everybody's definition of limited ingredient is the same. Right? Some people will say, oh, I have one protein and two carbohydrates, that means I'm a limited ingredient diet. But we know that if we have two carbohydrates and one protein, two is more than one. Right? And a dog needs more meat than he needs carbohydrates to survive and function properly. So with canine caviar, right, we are one protein and one complex carbohydrate. Everything else in the diet is really meant to create that alkalizing effect. So you know exactly how much meat you're getting and you know exactly how much complex carbohydrate you're getting in our food. Right, or so we have diets that have multiple complex or multiple proteins and multiple carbohydrates, right? Simple or complex, even if it's grain or grain free, right? Grain, uh, there are ma as many uh, simple carbohydrates in grain or grain free as there are complex carbohydrates, right? We know that if you talk about grain free, right? I mean, we know that corn, uh, uh, tapioca, potato, these things are not good quality grain free products, right? Conversely, if you take a grain product like a pearl millet or uh, 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 brown rice or something like this, which is a complex carbohydrate, right? That is much more beneficial to our pet's body. I know it's are easily digestible, right? All are very easily digestible, right? So the reason why, why, and the reason why we all have a need for both, for all, for fat, uh, protein, and, ca and carbohydrates, right? Is that protein builds muscle, right? Carbohydrates are energy, and fat is just uh, stored energy. So if a marathon runner would not eat a steak before he's going to run a marathon, right? Because he wouldn't make it three miles before he collapsed on the ground. He needs those complex carbohydrates, the same like a wolf. A wolf on average will travel somewhere between 60 to 90 miles per day. So if he only ate protein, he wouldn't have the energy to, to last until he was able to get his next meal. Uh, when we first started, uh, when we realized that, uh, that all pet foods, and from my own dog, obviously, and, realizing that you had to mix from brand X to brand Y when you switched, we developed our own enzymes. Today and currently, as far as we know, all enzymes that are in pet food, if you want to call them probiotics, prebiotics, fermentation culture, whatever you want to say, are based on the needs of a human, cow, pig, or a horse. None of them are based on the needs of a dog. So what we did is we actually created our own fermentation cultures <coughs> based on the needs of a dog. And this is why we are the only no transition dry food uh, in the world that we know of. Cornell University did an independent study on it and proved it to be 65% more effective than anything out there on the market. Obviously because ours is based on the needs of a dog and not the be based on the needs of some other mammal. Any questions about the uh, 
So far what we've gone through in our lifestyle brand, I know we're going through a little bit quickly because Cosm has to leave a little bit earlier today as well, but. Well, it's basically just teaching us that even, even us as humans is we need to also be an alkaline diet as well. So if we operate in everything as well as we want our pets to do so. And it's just, as I see with canine caviar is the balance is the right proper balance of, the, as you said, the proteins, the carbs, in order to keep that, their bodies insides to do their jobs, to, to make their, their immune system, their digestive system, and all work for themselves and help them break these down and absorb it, the nutrients properly. Yeah, and this is why we say that we are a lifestyle brand, right? Because the lifestyle isn't just for your pet, it's for you as well. Exactly. I mean, the training seminar is as much for humans as it is for their pets. The problem is, is that uh, we are more regimented and we care more about our pets than we care about ourselves, exactly. right? But, uh, you know, it, we should all be eating an alkaline or an alkalizing lifestyle. Yeah, and that works with, if we're doing that with our pets, then it falls back on us as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. You know, the problem, you know, the, the benefit of our pet is, right, is we control every aspect of their diet. So you can determine whether you want your pet to be alkaline or acidic, exactly. you know, but with us as humans, right, we are addicted to coffee and sugar and all these things that hopefully our pets aren't addicted to. Some of them do become addicted to sugar because a lot of snacks and food do put sugar and stuff in them, but. Yeah, I've noticed I've read, I've been reading, you know, and that's only because of here, uh, of learning and, and watching, is I've been so self-conscious of what I'm, I just do it just to see what is out there on the market for the pets. And boy, I tell you, it, it really eye-opening as to what our research has done, to com and I'm looking at these bags on the market, and I'm just like, wow, this is just amazing at all the ingredients is in there, and, and you know, even when customers call in to Canine Caviar, the explanations that they're giving us is really how, when we tell them and break it down, like you said, it's a lifestyle, we have to work to let them know that, change their mind you know basically teach them and like you know I, I know through me I've told them a lot I had to myself yeah. really transition my mind and I've been in this industry for 30 years so it, it was a learning basis as well for myself to realize that you know breaking all this down so it, it's just a matter of us really understanding why it, it's the best for, for our animals yeah and and, and when people come onto the brand, right, I mean, we have the highest customer retention of any pet food out there, right, unless, yes. uh, unless we're doing something ourselves, right, I mean, but, right. um, and, you know, people really see the differences in our pet, and why we also offer these test kits, right, so before the people come on our food, or the pets come on our food, people as well can try the test kits if they like, <laughs> right, but uh, before the dogs come on our food, they normally have a pH somewhere between five and six, and so there's ten strips in here that they can test the dog's urine, we ask they take one of the strips and test the dog's water, right? Because the water is an uncommon variable that we can't determine. Um, and we're looking for somewhere around pH neutral for the water. We wouldn't want the water to be too alkaline or too acidic because obviously that creates an issue. Then they take the one more strip and they test the dog. And then they come on our food and they test the dog's uh, urine pH over the next eight weeks. And they will see how we've taken them uh, from the inside of their body from an, from an acidic state to an alkaline state of 7.1 to 7.4 to mimic the cellular level of our bodies. So does it take only eight, eight weeks for the Depends on the severity, but yeah, roughly eight to 10 weeks. And a lot of that, like I said, does account for, depend on the water as well. But yeah, normally, like, you know, when you go back to our before and afters, right, all of those the before and afters are typically somewhere between four, I mean, so somewhere between eight and 10 weeks. Yeah, I can account for that. We can become acidic overnight, right? If we drink two cups of coffee today, yeah. I'll be acidic so tomorrow, anyway. right? Yeah. But it's a lifestyle. It really, this is why we say that we are a lifestyle brand, right? Because it's, you have to live the lifestyle if you want to mean, uh, maintain an alkaline or an alkalizing body. And it is, you know, it is one that obviously research will show you that is very beneficial, right? I mean, myself, I haven't been to the doctor in more than 20 years. For you know, for for being sick or something like this, yeah. Right, and I fly in an airplane more than <laughs> most people would care to do, right? And you, you know, when you fly in an airplane, it's a petri dish. I mean, oh, yeah. so you know, I don't get sick when I'm in the airplane. I, I'm average. I used to only be in one country for 36 hours at a time, so you know, it's, but I never get sick. So you eat your own alkaline. I do. I am uh, very alkaline. Li uh, lifestyle for 30 years and uh, I've also I also fast quite regularly well, every other week I fast for a minimum of 72 hours 
Oh, three days to <coughs> food. Yeah. So and that's every other week. And, that, and that, that I do change that up as well. Sometimes I will do a five and two. Sometimes I do, you know, three days every other week. Sometimes I will do ten days at one time. But uh, of course, water only. Water, yeah. Water with sodium bicarbonate. So the two main components of our blood is sodium bicarbonate and potassium bicarbonate. Um, and obviously, when we're just drinking regular water in America, which is not very healthy for you, right? It doesn't contain enough minerals in it. So uh, I always add the sodium bicarbonate to the water. And so, and I could add potassium bicarbonate as well, which is actually would be better, but it's just not as easy to find. Sodium bicarbonate and baking soda, right? I mean, you find yeah. it in every grocery store. Yeah. In fact, sodium bicarbonate is now used by marathon runners and like the people who do the, uh, the, big, the Tour de France and stuff like this, right? Because what happens is that we're adding more uh, alkaline to the body, right? So that the, so that the muscles don't become lactic. Right? This is why we have soreness, right? Because our bodies are stressed out and they use up all the alcohol, or the blood is actually taking that alkalinity from the, bu from the muscle tissue or from the cells and the organs, right? By, by, by loading the uh, alkalinity in our body, right? We know that we're gonna, that alkalinity is gonna last much longer. And since sodium bicarbonate is one of the key factors of the blood, right, that allows us to be a much longer uh, duration. So what is the, the, the purpose of fasting? Is it to make your body more alkaline? Uh, no, fasting is all about cellular regeneration and giving my body, right? I can eat everything correctly, right? But uh -huh. I can't control the, the environment or stuff like this. Yes. So, you know, obviously environmental pollution, especially if I'm in India or China, right, is very high, yeah. right? So uh, there's only, and all of that environmental pollution actually stores in your fat, right? Heavy metals and these types of things are stored in your fat. And the only way that you really utilize fat effectively is through fasting or through a ketosis diet, right? But when you fast, because all the heavy metals are actually stored in our, in our fat cells, right? And when we fast, then, uh, then uh, that causes our lymphatic system to be more activated. Well, it is when I'm exercising anyway, right? So that allows the, those heavy metals to be excreted through the body. Otherwise, they just stay in our fat forever. True. So that's the main reason why I fast. And cellular regeneration. Right, so that's why I vary it up because you know if I do a 10-day fast, I'm really getting into like stage two, almost stage three of fasting. There's actually four stages of fasting. Jeff may ask, you know, the no transition. This is one of the things I always have such cool. people fighting, fighting me on. Um, and even though we we explain that you know it is better for them because of the difference in the food, and you really want them, you know. I fight people on it, but I end up telling them if you are going to mix the food, which we, I always say we do not recommend. You know, I tell them half, and then by the third, only two days basically. By the third day, they should be 100% canine caviar. Is that the yeah. safest bet to say? Uh, yeah, and if they refuse, it. if they refuse to to no transition, for mm -hmm. sure. And the reason why people say that they should transition is because the 14,400 brands of dog food that they've been yeah. feeding all tell them they have to transition. Exactly. Right? Just that we, because we're the only one that there's a no transition, and this is why we normally tell them the story about the wolves in the wild, right? Yes. It's not natural to transition. Exactly. Yeah. And that's a, the that's a best And it couldn't way be more it. unnatural, actually. Exactly. Okay. That, that kind of clears up a little bit. It really yeah. helps. You know, that's one of the biggest things is, is that. Yeah. So we always try to give them something that they can relate to, right? Because Obviously, we're marketed to from the day we're born. Yeah. Correct. Right. So, how do we undo that marketing, right? Exactly. Because traditionally, people market for dollars, not for health. Exactly. Any other questions? Okay. So we'll go into the diets a little bit briefly here. Uh, this is our grain-free puppy. It's the only one puppy food we have, and people always say, "Well, if you're in all life stages formula." and uh, you believe in the diet of a wolf, why right? do you have a puppy formula? Well, because the wolves are all big, right? But unfortunately, or fortunately, in, the, in domestic dogs, we have chihuahuas, we have uh, poo toy poodles and all these things, right? So they need a, a higher calorie food because if it's an all life stages food, they tell you, uh, you feed twice as much. Well, twice as much in means twice as much out. And over my life, I have seen more small breeds in diapers as they get older than any other size dog that's out there, right? And why does that happen? Well, once again, 
Twice as much in means twice as much out, and they're expanding the colon beyond its natural capacity. As we age, we not only get wrinkles on the outside, like I'm starting to do, we get them on the inside, right? Which means that it's collagen loss. And so as uh, the elasticity, lo uh, lose that elasticity, they get the dogs get incontinence or colon slap, and this is why they have to wear a diaper. So with canine caviar, grain-free puppy, we have 636 calories per cup. So it's basically getting two cups in one so that we're not expanding that dog or that puppy's beyond its natural capacity. This is really only recommended for small breeds um, and pregnant or nursing bitches. We wouldn't do it for anybody else. Here's our duck, uh, open sky. Uh, this is all live stages formula. Here you can see, right, we have duck, chickpea, and duck fat. These are the three ingredients in the bag of food. The coconut basically is the fermented product, right, that's like allowing us to create those digestive enzymes or natural flora in the intestinal tract. And everything else that's in here is all about creating uh, an alkalizing diet. Uh, the thing in 2019, um, all, a lot of those ingredients will go away because they will be created in our natural vitamin and minerals that we've created on our own. Um, and so the, the, when the diet's all coated is synthetic free, there will only be 11 ingredients in the bag of food and actually three of them will be from the animal. And you can see here we always try to pair the duck with the duck fat, right? A, do a wolf in the wild wouldn't eat duck with chicken fat, right? He would eat duck and duck fat. Now you will see with some of the animals that we use, they don't have enough natural fat because they're a wild animal. And wild animals generally don't have a lot of fat, especially the four-legged ones. Uh, you can see we also have very high calories, right? And everything we do is based on metabolized energy. Why is this important? Um, because all pet foods actually contain the same amount of calories per kilogram before processing, as long as they have the same amount of fat or the same amount of carbohydrates or protein, right? The only thing that changes calories in our food that you will see is the amount of fat that we have in it. Because all protein and all carbohydrates contain four calories per gram and all fat contains nine calories per gram. So if you have six diets from six different companies that have 27% protein and 16% fat, theoretically, they should all have the same amount of metabolized energy, right? Because all of them have the same amount of protein and fat in them. But we know by re-looking over by bags and flipping over bags, some of them have higher calories and some of them have lower calories. Well, how do they do that? Well, the higher the calorie food, the higher the quality, right? Because they've destroyed the least amount of nutrition. <laughs> so when you have a calorie cup that is 552 calories per cup, and then you might have one that has 350 or 399 or whatever it is, obviously they've either cooked the food too long and they just, they've destroyed the natural nutrition or bioavailability of that pet food, or they've used very qual poor quality ingredients that don't meet the natural standards of, uh, of metabolized energy. So with canine caviar, we have the highest metabolized energy of any pet food on the market, so we do feel that for this reason that we are the best food for your pet as well. Is it, true, is it a true statement that you can't have a high K calorie count without the um, presence of meat? No, you can have a high calorie count without meat. Okay. Right, because protein and carbohydrates have the same amount of calories per cup. Okay. But when you're cooking the carbohydrates, you have a higher loss. Right? Because the, 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 you know, we all know when we cook carrots or if we cook broccoli or something like that, right? The longer you cook them, you shouldn't be eating the carrot, you should be drinking the water. Right? Because all of the nutrition is in the water. Sure. So what happens is, and this is why, let's say, if there's a vegetarian food out there, right, that has lower calories, it's just because of the way they process it. Okay. But theoretically, because all protein and carbohydrates have the same calories per cup, or the same calories per kilogram, I should say, right? They should, there's no differentiation. And, and some calorie, you know, it's all based on density as well, right? I mean, our food is very dense. We have, because we use, we're a very low carbohydrate or a low, very low starch uh, product, right? Um, we use basically high pressure and barometric pressure to actually hold our kibble together. One of the biggest complaints that we get from people is that, hey, when I'm at the bottom of your bag, there's a bunch of small kib or broken fines at the bottom of the bag. That's because we have such a low starch content, the food doesn't want to hold together. Because the only way we can get it to hold together is with very extreme pressure. So when we used to export, before we had a plant in Europe, when we used to export to Europe, Europe would check our food three or four times because we never had to pay a starch tax. And we we're the only company that ever exported to Europe that never had to pay a starch tax. And two thirds of the world actually eats pearl millet to alkalize their bodies every day. Right, if you've ever heard of congee or these types of things, they're all made from pearl millet. They do have rice congee as well, but pearl millet is the, is the more popular one. This is a chicken formula. You can see 599 calories per cup. 
Um, that's because of the, of the density of the, of the kibble as well. Um, and then we also are using pearl millet here. Oops. This is the special needs formula. It's low protein, low fat diet for a, uh, for a special purpose, right? If your dog has a special need, it should be on special needs. Right? It doesn't matter if it's a veterinary diet or whatever it is, the special needs formula. And the benefit of it is that low protein, low fat, but high in calories. So there's this difference between fasting and starvation. Starvation means that we're still eating food, but we're not eating enough food, so we're basically go, our body goes into starvation. And when our body goes into starvation, we actually conserve fat, and obviously if you have an overweight dog, that's the last thing you want to have them happen to them to do, right? So our food has enough calories in it that the dog is not going into starvation mode, so that he actually will burn fat as energy and, uh, con and conserve the protein and the, and the muscle mass. This is also a veterinary prescription diet, right? In some places we do sell it only through veterinarians. Uh, this one has a pH balance of 7.6 to 8.0. People want to know why do we have such a high pH balance on this one? Because we're trying to put, flood the body with even more oxygen so the body will rehabilitate much more quickly. And some people say, well, if my dog has to be on this for his whole life, isn't that pH a little bit high? <coughs> Technically it would, but you wouldn't only be on, on special needs because we want to always recommend protein rotation. So you would be rotating through with our canned foods. Um, once again, we're using minerals, or not using minerals to create that, right? We're using the herbs to create that. Um, if you have a dog that has uh, stervite crystals because he has too high of an alkalinity, you put them on special needs, the, 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 uh, the stervite crystals will, or the urinary tract infection will go away. Uh, same thing if they have kidney or liver function issues. Here's our canned foods. Uh, the turkey and the duck are currently out of stock. Um, but we will be switching to a new cannery in, uh, in uh, North America and all of these will be coming back uh, very quickly. And the benefit is, is that the new cannery really has, shares the same philosophy that we do. So the new diets will only have the protein, um, some broth, and uh, will have uh, fenugreek seeds or chia seeds in them. So no longer any gums or any of these types of plasmas that are used by, traditionally by other pet foods. And the proteins are higher now. The, yeah, the proteins are higher as well. Um, we will also we will be discontinuing the brush tail for uh, reasons uh, that it's not available. Uh, these are all made in New Zealand currently, and once we bring everything back to the United States, that just won't be available. Uh, the goat will still be here. The unagi we will be replacing with some other fish, uh, probably like a trout or something like that. Uh, here's the lamb and the salmon. You'll see all of our cans are only meat. These are leftover from the days when we used to make raw diets. Actually, I think that we probably were maybe the first raw company in America as well, 23 years ago when we sold raw diets. I don't remember seeing freezers in, sh in stores, right? Um, but our meat, our raw diets were only meat. So if you had, uh, it's the same like our cans. So you couldn't, if you just only fed the, diet, the raw meat uh, by itself and you want to make a complete diet, you would mix it with our Synergy and our kelp, right? So the Synergy is a dehydrated vegetable mix, which contains all the mineral, our vitamins, and the kelp contains all of the minerals that are needed. So when you add all these together, you have a complete diet. Uh, this is our sweet potato, right? People love our sweet potato because we are the only one that I know of that is natural uh, process that is, uh, that is uh, uh, yeah, semi-moist. Nice. Um, every other semi-moist one is using some sort of uh, propylene glycol or vegetable glycerin, which are not natural. Here's our buffalo products, and we do use buffalo from India, not uh, North American bison. Uh, everything we do is sustainable. You will never see us using tuna or North American bison or any other pro or animals that is not 100% sustainable. And right, people go, well, why do you use Indian buffalo? Four main reasons. The number one reason is, is that uh, there's uh, 94 million buffalo in India and the population is growing. If you do believe in protecting the planet, the, uh, the, the uh, South American beef are destroying the rainforest faster than anything on the planet. So obviously uh, that South, the rainforest contains all these natural things that we need to have for, to make a healthier planet. Why we have more hurricanes and bad weather, right, is, is a direct result of the loss of the uh, rainforest in South America. Three, the Indian buffalo actually grows twice as fast, or two-thirds more quickly, and really emits one-third less methane gas. So they're much more environmentally friendly and using less resources from the planet as well. And number four, India is a Hindu country. They don't believe in killing anything. They're all vegetarians. Right, so they have the strictest form of processing of any place on the planet. 
so the, the, the more ethically, uh, humanely processed. You can eat every single piece of that buffalo meat with a fork because it's so tender, right? Not like in America where there's a bunch of cortisol released into the animal because he's stressed out because he sees what's happening to the animal in front of him. All right, and it's every body part possible. Here you can see all these guys, right? right on average, they're all about around two months or so. You can see this guy at 12 weeks because he was really severely damaged. But on average, we're looking at somewhere between uh, four to six weeks or four to eight weeks for something to happen because it is a lifestyle. Any questions? <coughs> this product, you, uh, I don't know about the uh, first product was for puppy. Which age? Puppy? Yes. Uh, as far as the grain-free puppy? Yes, yes. Uh, that would for, for a small breed, it would be somewhere between, uh, let's say, 10 to 12 weeks to uh, one year. Ten to, okay, it's Bobby and Junior. Yeah, but yeah, Bobby and Junior. It's three stages. Yeah, Baby, yeah. Baby, as a starter, after Bobby, after Junior, that's continuing this 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 bag. Yeah, in America, it for one year. in America we only say puppy. Yes. I know in Europe and everywhere else in the world they say puppy junior and whatever else. Baby, puppy junior. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. We I only have babies. <laughs> I saw to you read 0.1. Yes. Uh, for what? Ah, uh, very good question, right? Because there's a big thing right now that uh, as Cornell University actually published a study two years ago about taurine deficit in dogs. Um, it gets and, okay. Uh, and it, it well, so sight hounds have traditionally had taurine de deficiencies, which is why we've added taurine to all of our diets for the past 23 years. The reason why dogs are having taurine, taurine deficiencies now mm. is because companies are adding too much fresh meat, and too much fresh meat, oh, fresh meat is great, right? I have to eat. But after you process it, right, mm -hmm. there's not much left because obviously fresh meat is about 65 to 75% water, and the bag of food is only 10%, so you have about roughly, you know, 90% loss of the product. Mm. So when they say, oh, we have 85% fresh meat, at the end of the day, they really only have about, left over about somewhere between 18 and 22% protein. Mm. So what they do is they add all of this concentrated pea protein or concentrated potato protein, mm. but unfortunately, only meat has amino acids uh, that uh, contain taurine. Uh, vegetables or plants don't contain taurine. And this is why the dogs are having cardiomyopathy issues now. Because what they're trying to do is make, they're trying to replace the lack of meat protein with an abundance of, of plant protein, and that just doesn't work for the animal. Mm. For this reason, we put uh, this percentage from No, not for this reason. For the reason because of sighthounds that traditionally over the last hundred years have had cardiomyopathy issues is why we put it in there. And the reason why Cornell University initially did the study is because they wanted to see if there was some direct correlation why labs and some of these other retrievers were having cardiomyopathy issues in 2000, in the 2000s, right? Versus what the cardi versus the dogs of the, of the sighthounds. But what they found out from their study wasn't something that they wanted to find out. They found out it just because the pet food companies were using too much plant-based protein and not enough animal-based protein. So the question, <clears throat> uh, after one year, I found it's a different type of products. Um, for which breed I can recommend this one or this one, duck with rice or uh, chicken with rice? Yeah, so we always recommend protein rotation, right? So uh, one month you'd feed duck, the next month you'd feed chicken, the next month you'd feed lamb, next month you'd feed buffalo, and constantly rotating through like they would in nature. Right? Obviously in nature they would be rotating every day or every other day or whatever it is, right? Maybe every other week, whatever it's going to be. Right? But it's not practical for someone to bring home seven bags of dog food. Mm -hmm. This is why we just tell them every bag. So, so I think what you're trying to say is that the grain-free puppy is a chicken-based formula, correct? Correct. So would we go to a free spirit or would we just go to maybe an open meadow, open sky? After the year, after you mean? The or year. After the year, you will, go to any, you will go to everything. It doesn't matter right? which yeah. one. Yeah, and the same thing, right? We're going to want you to rotate that puppy's diet, so that's why we have the cans. That's why our cans are only meat. All right, so we're not adding so many extra proteins for the pancreas to have to develop enzymes for and they're getting extra moisture from that can, right, which they need as a puppy, right, because of their growing, right, and even as an adult dog, we need more moisture. Right? But if we add fresh meat to a dry bag of dog food, there's no moisture left when we process it. So the only way that they're really going to get that moisture is by drinking the water or eating raw, right? And the real benefit of raw is that you get intracellular moisturization of the cells. The problem with raw is it's the most acidic that you can feed your pet. 
Right? This is why most raw foods tell you, oh, you should have a bone day or a fasting day for your dog because they're trying to get rid of the excess acid out of the dog's body. So, and, and nothing against raw, right? I mean, we were one of the first raw companies in, in America. We are big advocates for raw. The reason why we no longer make raw is because when HPP, HPP rules came out, we decided, hey, this we want to get out of it. Because once again, you're changing the molecular structure of that meat. Right, and you're not getting the advantages that you were before of it. Right. And with our kibble, as long as you don't pre-feed, but if you take a one cup of kibble and a half cup of hot water, and you pour the hot water on the kibble and you let it, uh, let it absorb into the, into the kibble and cool down a little bit, we're actually changing the molecular structure of that water so it actually absorbs into the cells like it would uh, if you were feeding a raw diet. I Jeff, on water, um, I've had a lot of questions on this, and I know you said take a strip, test it for that. What is the best water? Neutral. A neutral water. Okay. Seven. Just, just seven. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense because that way we can tell them that's where they need to be yeah. at. Right. Okay. Yeah. So if you were to buy like, uh, uh, shoot. Sorry. Sometimes <laughs> English is not. I mean, English is my first language, but not always. <laughs> I don't know. I can't remember the word. Uh, not filtered water, but when you know when you distilled. buy distilled water, right? There you go. Thank you. When you buy distilled water, right, that is pH neutral. Okay. And that's what I've been saying, but I, I didn't know the level where it should be yeah. at. And Seven is the best. It's the best. Okay. What about the can, uh, you know, those bottled the water, not the steel? The bottled water? The like bottled water, well, some of them are really bad. Like, really? I don't know if you saw, like, they did an expose on it on TV a while back, right? And, uh, you know, like, uh, the, the Sonys of the world and stuff like this are really un not, they're very acidic. And can, some of them contain high levels of, uh, of chlorine and all this stuff in there. So not all bottled water is, is good for you. The best, bottle, the best water actually for you is called a Kangen machine, where it actually splits the water molecule. And that's really the only alkaline water, right? I mean, you, alkaline water is quite popular in the grocery stores these days, right? But it's really only mineral water that they're calling alkaline water. So you, you wouldn't want to give this to your pet because that would give them a urinary tract infection. But if you were to buy this machine, you know, water is H2O, right? So you have two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen. When you split the hydrogen molecule in two, <coughs> one of those hydrogen molecules is, uh, is positive and one of them is negative, right? So pH stands for potential of hydrogen. So when we're using the positive hydrogen atom, right, or the machine is using magnets to split those water molecules, then you will actually get <coughs> real alkaline water. So how many languages can you do this seminar in? <laughs> <laughs> Officially, two. <laughs> Which I was was sporadically, uh, three. What are they? Uh, German and English. German and English. About potato. Most of products are potato. But potato. I saw potato, not sweet potato, potato. Yeah, regular potato, yes. Yeah, cereal potato. Why you don't use? Uh, because it's, we consider it to be a cheap starch. Only for this season. Yeah. And it's, a, and it's a simple carbohydrate, right? So uh, everything we do is all about using complex carbohydrates, right? Because we want to lower the glycemic index, mm -hmm. right? So something like a simple carbohydrate right, would convert to energy much more quickly and, and that would put much more stress on our pancreas and liver. Mm -hmm. Where a complex carbohydrate is going to give us a more even energy burn, right? so we're minimizing the stress on the pancreas and the, and the liver. And so this is why this is why initially when grain free came out, why potato was so popular, right? Because it's a very good starch, mm. right? It will hold the kibble together like nobody's business, mm. right? In most companies, right? They only care about the look and qual look of the kibble, mm. right? Because the customer they want to know how it's going to react, right? Oh well, yeah, it looks good. It holds together. Yes, right. Exactly. But with us, when we do ours, we use we use very extreme pressure to try to hold it together. We do have a good uh, percentage of fiber. And the two type of fiber. Yeah, you have soluble fiber and, and, and uh, insoluble fiber, exactly. right? So what we're in, obviously, if you use too much fiber, uh, that's uh, non-digestible fiber, right? That lowers your digestibility as well. Yeah. These are other ingredients. So you do need some insoluble fiber, right? Because that's how you actually create the the, the nice uh, fermentation cultures. Yes, right? but I can use another, another type of you fiber. You can use many. Yes, there are many available. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some of them better, some of them yeah, are some of them healthier, and some of them not exactly. healthier. All right, it's healthy. What formula would you recommend for someone who's first wanting to start out on can of caviar? Depends on the reason why they're switching, right? If it's uh, if they have a finicky dog, I wouldn't recommend special needs, 
right? Because obviously that one has the least amount of meat in it and would be therefore the least palatable. Although I'm very confident when it comes switches over to synthetic free that it will also be very palatable since uh, the people who have been testing the synthetic free <laughs> can attest to how much more palatable it really is. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but otherwise we would recommend just to switch to whatever formula. But I always recommend special needs first for two reasons. One is we recommend, since people aren't going to fast their dogs generally, right? They look at it like you're crazy or from another planet if you tell them to not feed their dog for a day or two. But a wolf fasts all the time, um, they, whether by choice or by not by choice, right? But the special needs formula, we also, also recommend it as one bag per year as like a detox formula. Right? Because then once again, we have environmental pollution. We have chemicals that they're cleaning the floor with, right? The dogs are getting this in their body. So our special needs formula, if they're not going to fast their dog, is more like a detox. So if they do one bag a year of the special needs, right, they're giving their dog the best ability to, to regenerate or oxygenate the cellular tissue. And that would also be good for people who are hesitant on transitioning mm -hmm. with the special needs is to recommend that saying. For that sure. That the kennels love the special needs, right? Because it's giving the dog high calorie, okay. so they're you know they're very they're, they look great in the kennel. They're not dropping weight or any of this stuff, right. right? But they're not having messes to clean up, and they're not having dogs who are sick or they're trying to transition, right? Because a lot of time they just drop the dog up to the kennel, yes. and they're like, okay, do whatever. Well, the kennel owner's like, okay, well, I'm gonna have five days of a mess because this dog is gonna be transitioning. But when the kennel uses our special needs formula, there's no transition, so the dogs come in. Right? And when you have a cleaner kennel, you have less, less dog, you know, getting sick, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Because you know the dogs spread the disease, uh, they spread the infection quickly. Yes, that makes sense. So if you have a breeder or a kennel or something like this, right? This, the special needs is really the best for those uh, for those boarding kennels. Give good calorie and uh, less disease. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and then the dog is gonna, you know detox if it's in the kennel for a couple of weeks, right? Because the owners are on a two week vacation. They're gonna come back and they're gonna say, wow, my dog looks great, right? Because generally the dog comes in the kennel, he's stressed out, yeah. but now they're gonna have this you know, body where they're gonna be actually having more oxygen and the owner's actually gonna see, right? Like maybe if the dog is a little bit older and they start to have cloudy eyes, they go in our formula, the eyes are gonna clear up, right? Because they are gonna oxygenate every part of the body. The tear stains or if they have hot spots or these types of things are all gonna go away as well. Right, tear stains really are just because the body is not absorbing the iron efficiently. So what happens is, is that when we're more acidic, right, our body isn't absorbing the nutrition as well as it is when it's alkaline. So when our body is alkaline like this, right, we're absorbing the iron correctly. Or if the dog has, you know, issues on the ears or something like this, right, it's because there's not enough oxygen, right, so the body isn't able to filter out, right. We have two filtration systems in our body, our blood and our lymphatic system. Right? And when our blood, so blood is what they call a colloidal solution, it requires oxygen to flow. So the more oxygen that we have, or the more alkaline uh, that our body is, right, the more freely able that is, uh, the blood is able to flow to those areas where there's less blood flow. And then our lymphatic system, right, as long as we're getting exercise, uh, uh, will minimize the congestion. Like we talked about earlier, right, a wolf in the wild will travel somewhere between 60 and 90 miles per day. Right? But that wolf will never consume more than 30% protein ever on a daily basis. And there's no reason for our dogs to ever have more than 30% protein unless they're running the Iditarod in, in Alaska or something like this, right? Then they can jam through as much as they want because those dogs are really actually working dogs. But, so if the wolf is traveling on average 60 to 90 miles per day, and they're consuming on average less than around 30% protein, 28 to 30%, what do you think our dogs at home need, right? It takes a lot of trips from the couch to kitchen <laughs> to equal one mile and let alone, uh, let alone, uh, let alone 60 to 90 miles. Or if you say, oh, my dog is active, I walk him around the block two times. <laughs> you know, that's not even a, a, a half a mile, let alone. <laughs> right, so why we always recommend that, you know, that we, our calorie contents really is based on an, an inactive dog. But an active dog really is a working dog. A police dog is not an, a working dog unless he's actually training. Right? Otherwise he sits in the back of the cop car for 23 hours, hopefully he doesn't have to work, right? The dog for, with this puppy formula, uh, from uh, for four weeks or six weeks, I can use it. You can if you grind it up, uh -huh. right? So you would grind it up and you would mix it with, say, goat milk or something like this. But, uh, but I think... But it's not really a weaning formula by itself. But it's enough for this age of the puppy? Some areas, like, 
some areas do take the puppies are quite young, right? I mean, I know like South Korea, they do it in some places in Asia and obviously in some places in the Middle East as well, they take the puppy from the mother quite young. Yeah, yeah, yes. In America, we traditionally only, we wait until about 10 to 12 weeks. Yes, two months, two months is feeding the mother feeding puppy after. Yeah. Also after two months, from two months to one year, the same food, puppy changed. Big, 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 10, 10 months, it's only one food. Yeah. Well, this is why we recommend the, the cans, right? So you're rotating through with getting extra protein with those cans. Mm. Yes, I can, I can, yes. I can use cans with food. Yeah. Any other questions? Everything's wild caught and free range? It is. Uh, well, I shouldn't say wild caught, right? Uh, you know, uh, the lamb are actually are not wild, or, or <laughs> stuff like this, right? Or the chickens. Uh -huh. But yes, everything is uh, is raised in a free range environment. Uh, hormone free, antibiotic free, pesticide free. Okay. It's a common question. You actually mentioned before when we were sitting down that uh, um, dogs eat less with canned caviar than any other the brand just because we have higher calories high calories yeah so if you were to take uh, you know another brand right and they and they said oh for one cup we have uh, 399 metabolized energy calories right obviously if ours is 552 or whatever it is right then you that same cup is going to have more energy feeding diet feeding yeah and that's why it's a guideline right because dogs are like humans right some have better metabolism than others mm -hmm. right and so you know, if, uh, if, if your dog has a higher metabolized energy, or I mean, a, a higher uh, metabolic rate, right, he's going to need more calories. But traditionally, dogs will eat to caloric intake, right? This is all stemmed from a wolf, right? If a wolf ate more calories than he needed, that wolf would get fat, and obviously he wouldn't live very long. <laughs> right? Or, or he would be leaving a big stool behind, right? And obviously then that would be, he would, somebody would track him and eat him. <laughs> right? So with our food, Right, the dogs will have very small stools, more like in nature. Because they're also absorbing it. They're absorbing the nutrition, yeah. Which is what we want. Yeah. And for those people who say, oh, you know, I want my, we all, we all want our dogs to live forever, right? Otherwise we wouldn't get them, right? I mean, we, we really want them to live forever. And some people say, well, you know, if I only feed him one cup of your food, when I'm used to feeding three cups of this other food, he's going to be hungry and he's going to want to gnaw my leg off, mm. right? We always say, well, we want our dogs to live forever, right? So in order to make him live as long as possible, we want to give them the highest amount of calories as possible so that he's not having to work so hard to convert it to energy. Because everything in our body is converted to, to glucose, right? We can, we, we, whatever we eat, aside from fat, right? If it's protein or carbohydrate, it's all converted into glucose. And that glucose is stored in our cells roughly 48 hours. Right? And when we don't eat for 24 or 48 hours, right, our body will start to produce ketones, which is a second form of energy, and that converts the fat into actual energy. But does the calorie uh, change to, to fat? If it's, so the fat that's in the body, right, if we're not using it daily, right, mm -hmm. so you want to gain weight, right, you yeah. eat more calories than you're, yeah. than you're uh, burning in energy, right? Yeah. You want to lose weight, right, you consume fewer calories yeah. than you're converting. Now, if you want to lose fat, that's a different story, right? Because traditionally, when we're losing fat or when we're losing weight, or my people, they go on a diet, right? And they say, oh, I've lost so much fat weight, but then I go back and I start eating again, I gain it all back. Because they're not burning fat, they're generally burning more muscle than they're burning fat. In order to really burn fat, you need to, your body needs to develop ketones. And this is either done through fasting or through a ketosis diet. So when your body starts producing ketones, you use fat as energy. Right? So not so many hundreds of centuries ago, right? Uh, humans didn't eat every day either, right? We were starving a lot, right? And the reason why why we have fat, right, which is not really necessary today, because obviously we have an overabundance of readily available food until we get a few more billion people on the planet, and then there that won't be available either. But <laughs> at the moment, we have some more food than we need, right? So we don't really need fat, but we haven't uh, we haven't progressed, right, as a, as as a species to not need that fat. Right, tradition that fat is only on the days when we didn't have energy or we couldn't eat anything. Right? Especially when we were back and we were hunters and gatherers, right? If we only had 48 hours of energy in our cells, and if we didn't have fat, we would be dead, right? The, on, the seven t on the third day. But because we have fat, the body will start producing, instead of producing, converting everything into glucose, 
right, the body will produce ketones and start using the energy as fat. So that ketones will convert the, the fat into energy. We don't lose fat by exercising per se. We lose, fat is actually lose, lost more by inhaling and exhaling, respi respiratory. And so if I was to sit here and breathe in and out really quickly for five minutes, I would lose more weight than the guy who's walking in the treadmill for a half an hour. Say again the, the problem. <laughs> <laughs> so we all and practice. <laughs> this is the training session for right? I know. So fat is lost by inhalation and exhalation. Right? So if we do heavy breathing, this is how we lose weight. This is why if you go to the gym, theoretically you're losing weight right? because you're exercising more aggressively. Okay, so the, but, but if you were to wander around the, the block, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know, if you hear someone doing that, you know what's going on. You will lose more weight by doing that than walking around the block. I don't have to the other, the other way, right, is to start to producing ketones. Ketones. Right? And that only happens when we have a lack of, uh, of glucose in our body. This is why I fast as well. <laughs>